Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the words of the Pele Yoyetz of Ava Ish Isha, love of a husband and a wife. And he brings down today an important foundational idea that's beyond only marriage, of course. It's going to be dealing with all relationships, but it rears its ugly head often, way too often, between a husband and a wife. This is a major principle in thought. When there is an argument between people, or between a husband and his wife, and one of them just lets loose the dam of anger and argumentativeness just starts flowing from that person. And he goes, he goes beyond the bounds of what is considered to be appropriate, how he speaks to the other person. His mouth has no filter to it. It has no control over what he's saying. So you have two people. Takes two to tango, as they say. One person got upset and he begins the mariva. He begins the argument. Let's take this with a husband and a wife. Let's say the husband comes home and he's in a bad mood and he sees that his wife didn't prepare dinner. Again, it's the third night in the row that he doesn't have dinner waiting for him on the table. And he's hungry and he's grumpy and he's tired and he is furious at this point. And he unleashes on his wife. He starts screaming and yelling, calling her names, putting her down. What kind of a wife are you? You call this Ezer Kenegdo, Eishas Chal. I just want a little bit of food to eat. I come home three nights in a row, there's nothing to eat. What does his wife do at this moment? Says the Pelayoyit, she has a decision that she can make which is far above the position that her husband is in right now. And that is, she, she, she'll be strong. And she should not respond to him in this time of anger. Not good or not bad. Nothing. Keep quiet. Rather, she should wait until his anger has passed. And after one or two days has passed, then you can rebuke this person. We'll call it constructive criticism. B'shalom, peacefully. And you do it with a gentle, soft language. You speak softly to him. And you ask him, Madua kacha asisa? Why did you do that the other night? Ma pishi ma khatasi? I did such a terrible thing. What sin did I do? Ki delakta acharai that you were coming after me with this rage. The kaasta lie, you were so angry with me. Gam kaas aloi chamas bechapi. You were furious and you were behaving in such a way. What did I do that's so terrible? I forgot to make dinner. I'm sorry. Hayeti be'eni Hashem. But the way that you were acting, is that what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants? Is that the proper way for a husband to treat his wife? Tell me, my dear, is it? And say other nice, gentle things to your husband. Or again, vice versa, the, the husband to the wife, if she's the one who's the instigator of the argument. Somebody who does this shows that they love peace and they're chasing after peace. They will have peace in their portion and in their palaces. There will be tranquility. Their home is going to be a home of peacefulness, of calmness, of tranquility. Because instead of responding to the argumentative nature of your spouse, you held off for a day or two until they calmed down. And after they calmed down, you came gently and you asked, what did I do that was so terrible? I'm so sorry, please. However, to get so angry and to be so demonstrative and to be so loud and screaming, all these things, is that what's the right thing to do? Is that how we're gonna have Shalom Bayes in our house? And you are from the people that keep the world going and the world exists for people who know how to remain silent at the time of an argument. Like our sages teach us in the Gemara, it says in the verse in Eyev, 
Tayla Eretz Ablima. The earth is hanging. Al Blima on Blima. What is Blima? Says the Gemara. Sha'ila Miskayim Al Misha Boilein Piv. The world exists on those that seal their mouth. Vishas Mariva at the time of arguments. Because when you are quiet and you don't respond and you don't engage in the argument, guess what happens? The machlekes, the fighting, the argument, the distress that there is between the couple, it is akar, it is uprooted. It never happens. It never comes into this world. Says the Peleyoyes, I want to give you advice how to avoid arguments everywhere across the board. But this especially happens in marriage. Take yourself out of the equation. Take your feelings, take your emotions, take your pride, take it out of the equation and realize there's a much bigger picture and that picture is, I want to have a house that is going to be peaceful. I want to have a marriage that is going to be loving. I want my children to look at their father and their mother and to see tranquility and happiness and peace of mind. That's what I want them to see. So if my husband or if my wife will come home or if I will come home and I will start getting attacked and nagged and attacked and scream that and yell that, I'm not going to engage. I'm going to hold off in silence for a day till everything calms down. And then after that, I'll break the silence by asking, what was so terrible what I did last night? Is it worthwhile having such a reaction? We're trying to create shalom bias in this house, that the shechina should want to dwell in our house, that our children should feel comfortable and safe in our house, that guests should feel the warmth and the kedusha when they come into our home. Is that how we're going to do that? Is that what is good in the eyes of Hashem? Not condescending, you're not trying to get under the skin and put a dagger in the heart, peacefully, calmly trying to defuse the situation so that the next time around, before your spouse is ready to unleash the arsenal of anger and wrath, they will think more than once and twice, and they'll learn how to control themselves as well. And then you'll have a house that is free of angst and arguments and machlikis, Rather, you have a house that is filled with shalom, with peace, tranquility, and filled with the greatest gift of all. And that is the hashros hashchina. The shchina will dwell between the two of you. Have a wonderful day.